To start with the tibial resection, we first place the knee in 90 degrees of flexion with the tibia translated anteriorly and stabilized. For that, we put a posterior retractor on the tibia. Once the knee is translated anteriorly and stabilized, we can put, put the proximal ankle clamp with the uphold rod and the tibial block. So, after the alignment of proximal ankle clamp to proximal to the malleoli, align the proximal center marking line on the tibial cutting block with the medial one third of the tibial tubercle to set the rotation of the tibia. Now the tibial block is provided stability by inserting central pins through the vertical slots in the cutting block and to aid the stability to the construct. To check the level of the cut, we use the C guide or the angel wing. Slotted tibial stylus set for the medial condyle at 2 millimeters of resection. We reconfirm the resection by using the angel wing. After confirming the resection, the whole construct is stabilized using straight pins. After two straight pins, a uh, shoulder pin can be placed obliquely. Once the tibial block is stabilized, we can remove the slot and the angle clamp. At this point of time, an alignment tower can be used uh, by using uh, the tibial cutting, two holes on the tibial cutting block to see and assess the alignment of the tibia. So alignment tower is removed before making the resection. After checking the proper alignment of the tibia. Now before resecting the tibia, the lateral and the medial collateral ligaments are to be protected. We protect them by medial and lateral spikes. So once the tibial resection is done, the removed part is removed from the tibia and the tibial block can be now removed by removing all the pins. Now to do the femoral alignment, we enter the medullary canal in the mid, at the midline of the trochlea 7 to 10 millimeters anterior to the origin of the PCL. Now the drill has to be done to the depth of approximately 5 to 7 centimeters and we have to take care to avoid the cortices. After the medullary canal is reamed, we attach the T handle to the intramedullary rod and slowly introduce the rod into the medullary canal up to the level of the isthmus. After placing the intramedullary rod, we remove the T-handle and replace it with the femoral alignment zig. Now zig is secured again using by straight pins. To perform this particular resection, we are using a 9 mm of femoral cut and 5 degrees of valgus. And uh, to remove the femoral alignment guide from the femoral zig, we use our thumb and index finger to remove the guide and put the, push the, pull the tree handle outside of the intramedullary canal. For femoral resection, we first check the level of resection using a angel wing. Once the level of resection is confirmed, we secure the femoral block using a threaded shoulder pin. Now we make the distal femoral cut using the oscillating saw through the femoral cutting guide. After 
after the cut is made we check the level of femur cut if they are at the same level after checking the level we remove the pins and the distal femoral cutting guide now to check the extension gap we use the exten extension uh, fixed bearing extension 8mm block and we place it in the uh, femoral and the tibial gap once placed the tibial and femoral alignment can also be checked by using the alignment rods and placing them in the holes provided on the bearing block so proximally the rod has to be uh, just over the center of the femur head and distally on the second toe once you have confirmed the alignment of the joint we remove the rod and the bearing and put the knee back in flexion and uh, start with the femoral sizing so after the checking the extension gap we put the limb back to flexion after the flexion we put the do the femoral sizing by placing the fixed reference sizing guide so place the sizing guide stylus on the anterior femur with the tip positioned at the intended exit point so this is the tip this has to be positioned at the intended exit point of the anterior part of the femur to avoid notching we fix and lock the sizing guide by putting down the lever and check the size of the femur from the distal end in this case the femur size has come out to be 4 after putting the size guide we put the the guide to place the pins uh, to fix the femoral block after placing the fixed uh, reference guide for femur we check the rotation in this case this is the 3 degree external rotation and of the left side and after uh, checking the rotation and the anterior most part for avoiding the notching we secured the femoral sizing zig and then after placing the pins we remove the whole construct leaving the pins there and replace it with the 4 in 1 femoral block these this is the 4 in 1 femoral cutting block and we place it at the 0 degree uh, 0 mm cuts and then check the level of the cuts which we have previously uh, secured by using the femoral sizer after the block is placed and the femoral cut is confirmed then we secure the angle block using the threaded shoulder pin after the block is secured we make the anterior cuts but after placing the femoral block and securing it with the straight pins and the threaded pins the anterior cut and the posterior cut are made while protecting the medial and the collateral ligaments after the anterior notch cut and the posterior cut are made now we remove the straight pins before making the anterior chamfer and the posterior chamfer cuts now anterior and the posterior chamfer cuts are made again by protecting the collateral ligaments once the anterior cut the posterior cut the anterior chamfer and the posterior chamfer are done we remove the block by removing the shoulder pins which are threaded pins after the femoral cuts are made and the femoral cut block is removed we check the flexion gap after checking the flexion gap we can also use the rod to see the alignment again in flexion once the flexion gap is checked we put the guide distal cutting guide for the notch notch guide 
and secure it with the uh, pins, straight pins. After the guide is secured, the notch cut is made using the guide. Now the notch cut is made first. After the notch cut is made, we remove the femoral guide for the notch. So after all the femoral and the tibial cuts are made, we start with the femoral trial and the tibial trial. Firstly with the femoral trial, for the femoral trial we attach the slab, the universal handle to the appropriate sized femur trial on the insert by depressing the two uh, triggers and uh, to they, these same triggers are used to separate the femoral trial from the femur as well. So now we put the femur on the cuts we have made, we position the trial onto the femur impacting them as necessary using a hammer to, to uh, detach the insert from the femur we rotate we have to rotate this the handle of, of the universal extractor and then we compress uh, on the side levers and remove the uh, universal, universal uh, handle after the placement of the femoral femoral trial, we place the tibial trial. After the placement of the femoral and the tibial trial, we see the extension and the flexion and the soft tissue balance. After the soft tissue balance has been checked in flexion and extension, we then start with the tibial preparation. After, after the femoral implant and the tibial tray is applied, we see the flexion and extension gaps. After all the cuts are made and the femoral trial is done, we place the knee in more than 90 degrees to 100 degrees of flexion. And then we position the tray trial to accommodate the maximum uh, coverage of the tray on the proximal tibia. Once the appropriate size is taken, it is then the, the then we put the rod to see the alignment of the tray with the foot. Once we check that, we remove the rod and secure the tray in its place by using pins. Then we place the tibial tower, the resection tower, and. Uh, After positioning the appropriate size of the tray, tray trial, we, we have to place the tibial resection tower. Once secured in place, it has to be hammered in its position. Once the tower is secured, the intramedullary drill is used for the placement of the cement on the canal. The knee punch impactor is used and hammered.